Join us for a driving review of the Cupra Ateca facelift. Let's go! Here in the front, with the facelift, the Cupra Ateca, and also the normal Seat Ateca, gets a new front grille form. So it's more than in line with the bigger Seat Taraco, for example. And the strong red color for today is called Velvet Red. A really, really nice one. Cupra logo, yeah, you know, it always has this tribal style. Some love it, some don't like it. Tell me your comments about that. And then LED headlamps, the main one, come with LED. Always a cool signature. And also when you hit the turning indicators, it replaces right that. The length is at 4 meters 39, 14 foot 4 or 173 inches. And the Cupra Attacker already comes always a standard with 19 inch wheels. Different designs are possible here also with this Cupra copper scheme. And also you already get bigger brakes, but these are the optional Bremer performance brakes, quite expensive even more massive, even bigger, even better braking performance and also with the copper brake calipers in this case. Painted wheel arches for the Cooper Taker and contrasting mirror caps as well as in the lower body. Other than that, it's not a long vehicle. That's also what is, you know, for the nice dimensions, exterior to interior and so on. The Cooper Taker does come standard with the adaptive suspension, the DCC. And here in the rear you can see once again, a typical hatch style, yes, but then again, interesting tail lamp design here, really cool. And when you hit the turning indicators, now also with, and with the cascading turning indicator light right here. Then you can see here Cupra logo, really big in the lower part. However, in the upper part, this is one of the options that this top wing comes with a carbon fiber design. And then in the lower part, we see the massive exhaust pipes, four pipes and yeah, once again, we have the Akrapovic exhaust. We all thought it would be limited to the limited edition that was available in the pre facelift There's also a nice review to that. But here, once again, we have it and probably people just asked for it too much. And there again, you can get the Akrapovic exhaust. And the engine is does feature a Cupra logo right here, two rear TSI, four cylinder engine, turbo petrol, 300 horsepower, 400 newton meters of torque, and also here in this phase update, 4.9 seconds now the acceleration figure to one kilometer or 62 miles an hour with the Haldex all wheel drive, so front plus rear on demand. completely new steering wheel right here, new design, then the Cupra button right here to change the driving modes, but it's not that you click once and then you're in the Cupra mode, you switch through the modes by that. We'll show that when we drive the car as well. Right side then start stop engine button, left side to control the cruise control, right side here now with the heated steering wheel option and also then here to browse through the digital instruments and seats you get these performance seats with integrated head restraints as standard now with the facelift then microfiber on the inside for good climate comfort and also holding you tight in fast corners and you see the sporty form here as well and then leather red on the outside with a nice styling and these copper accentuations as contrast stitches. Now getting inside, easy entry and that's the cool thing about this vehicle. Really sporty, has a lot of performance but it's also very comfortable upright seating position and it's not the biggest SUV but you still already have a grown up SUV feeling. Interior overview, again here soft touch and these lines on the dashboard are cleverly integrated. They indeed you know, serve a design purpose and also a nice integration of that screen here and the split here horizontal area and then this vertical area 
right here classic climate unit i like to have that so easy to control and glad we still have that and not everything pushed put in the uh, touchscreen right here usually a normal attacker would start with an 8.25 inch screen here otherwise an option but the standard for the cooper attacker 9.2 inch bigger screen however the smaller screen does have an advantage still with you know separate knobs this one here totally knob less on the left side also a standard attacker would start with still with analog instruments and a small 3.5 tft however these ones here 10.25 digital instruments then one more look here at the new steering wheel here to, to, for example to browse through the volume right side then to control some of the digital instruments here in this middle gauge good to have a start stop engine button the steering wheel sport design also the heated steering wheel and left side once again the cooper mode and you can see here on the right side it browses through the driving modes and the digital instruments actually very well to read and of course you're flexible because you can change your view assistance system view or this sportier view or then also this one with the rpm centralized um, so this is definitely very helpful and what you can also do is here put the map all over the place not flickering in real life by the way now details to the infotainment screen new software but it's slower than before and for example when i click once why don't i get in the map i have to click twice to get in the map why is that so and then zooming in out um, at the moment it's actually quite okay as for the web collection but it really depends on how fast it is and see here could definitely be more responsive overall then there's also a second main menu which is better has a better overview i think with these icon view and then you can also access the Equipo CarPlay here. It's a good integration right here. And as for the rear area, this is hard pack material then here at the rear. And soft touch, however, at the inside part right there. And then um, here with these performance seats, although they're quite voluminous, we still have enough legroom. Again, it's not the longest SUV, but we still have enough legroom here because we also sit right upright. And it's a very comfortable rear seating. So for this length of the vehicle, it's one of the most comfortable rear areas. Electric tailgate sadly is an option and then 485 liters instead of 510 because this one here does have the Haldex all-wheel drive clutch so you lose a little bit of liter capacity however the total capacity then about 1600 liters and you can read it here by folding it right there it's a good solution this by the way here is an additional equipment when you want to have a net on the top of that so but here first of all the measures like this is actually a good meter right here and the normal length is about yeah 85 centimeters we're starting at about 40 kilometers an hour to be safe all the way free let's pin it down let's go That's 200 kilometers an hour, 125 miles an hour. Here now it also gets quite noisy, no wonder. But nice DSG fart from this Akrapovic exhaust. Here now lane change at high speeds, really stable. DCC set on the sport mode. Wow, what a feeling. I mean, it doesn't feel like an SUV, more like a, like a compact hot hatch. Really feels so calm and collected also at higher speeds. Nice steering input also, very precise. I have. This is one of the best things about this vehicle. You feel so much in control. This is like, you know, you start driving and no matter if you have driven this car for a hundred hours or just for the first minute, you start driving and say like, okay, that's my car. I feel at home. Everything is fine, you know. That's, you know, it's everything, you know. And this is really one of the things that's, that's the core thing, I, you know, I'm, I like about this vehicle. You just feel one with the car at once. So that's really cool thing. You're now getting a little bit calmer. You can relax. Driving mode again, say, oh yeah, oh, I wanna have a soft suspension now once again, comfort mode. You can also set the cruise control right here. Travel assist is also activated. Uh, if you like that, that's you now keeping the car in the lane. And then relax a little bit in here in the tunnel. There is some enemy lighting, but I think they could have also upgraded. It's just at the inside of the doors. 
not enough for an um, expensive Cooper vehicle, I think. Once again, Cooper mode, I shift back myself, window down, second gear. <laughs> so, and here we go when we are already at speed. Let's surprise everyone else around us. stable in these fast corners, amazing. And we're still driving a compact SUV, wow. Whew. That is, that thing is, oh, just turn on the music. <laughs> that thing is really racy, I can just stress that. And let's put it to a normal highway speed then, as for noise insulation. So 160 is not, you know, yeah, it's already quite noisy, you know, that's not that good. So I would say, you know, good motorway speed is like 145. Then here you see uh, like the noise insulation is actually good for that. So there are cars that are a little bit more silent at slower speeds, yes. But I mean, Germany is the only country where we drive so fast and then only in certain situations. I always just do this test run because we have the possibility here and then we can also see how good is the car when it behaves, you know, how it behaves at these high speeds. And what you also realize, you know, I was maintaining the, the allowed speed and then people already behind me were like starting to, to bully, think like, oh, this guy can't drive fast. I mean, it's like, a, yeah, maybe that's a, something like an exhaust, but I mean, what, what car is that even? I don't even know that brand and it's like a small SUV or something. And then you start hitting the throttle and everyone's like, what is going on there? And then the Akrapovich exhaust like, <laughs> Yeah, so you can really surprise people with this vehicle here, and that's probably also why they picked this separate branding. Yes, to justify higher prices, definitely, but also to make you feel that you have something a little bit more special. And now, one more time to the Kruger mode and getting up out of the performance hill. <laughs> so, here we go. Once again, don't have to steer that much. Then immediately at the gas, getting out of the corner very easily. No, you know, no, no front wheel bias to be felt. Nice sound from the performance exhaust. Wow, what a great handling once again. So neutrally balanced. Yeah, of course you don't feel that you have like a rear wheel push or something around the corner. So that's where, for example, the new Tiguan R is better, where it has this, this active torque vectoring, this torque split at the rear axle. That is definitely very cool. The Ateca feels a little bit more compact for that. And yeah, I mean, having a torque split at the rear is really, really cool. It's not that it wouldn't be fun here, you know, without having it. Once again, next corners here, great control of the steering wheel. Nice acceleration also uphill. And of course you can shift down or back yourself. Here yeah, shifting pedals. You can shift down a little bit earlier. Do a bit on the gas. Nice south sound once again. Two down. Good grip. Wow. That is very well done. So although we have some wet leaves, no traction loss at all. One more corner on the right. Careful here with the pedestrians. Safety first. And one more acceleration. Yeah, very, very nice. Having, once again, a lot of fun with the Cooper Attacker. And I mean, we have taken this vehicle here to so many places worldwide, basically. You should also check out some other reviews of that. We will link in all in the video description. And now to our conclusion for today with the updated Cupra Ateca. Exterior-wise, even stronger than before. I think the new grille suits it very, very well. And also interior-wise, good build quality and also reasonable space. The exterior-interior dimensions 
this relation is really, really good. And that's making it a great primary vehicle where you can do everything with and still already have a lot of driving fun, especially in that Cupra mode. Nice performance with this 4.9 seconds in the acceleration figure. Also great sporty seats that are both suitable for the visual sporty stuff, but also seat comfort wise in the long run, also with animal free materials on the seat. With the infotainment system, I mean, yeah, the digital instruments and the steering wheel, the new steering wheel is actually quite nice. However, the main infotainment unit is slower than before, so that's only, you know, it's more complex than before, but that's definitely a step backwards. I would just prefer the old infotainment system. That's the only thing, everything else really nice with this update. And also great that we can once again have this Akrapovic exhaust. What do you think? Tell us your comments here about the updated Cupra Attacker. Also tell us if you want to see the normal set attacker in the updated facelift review. We already have a static presentation of that. You can also tune into that. We will link it in the video description. See you there.